Hello, my name is Pablo Stanley, and this is part of a crash course on Figma's Auto Layout. In this lesson, we'll create a context list. Simple, right? Oh, but what happens when the text grows into two lines? How can you adapt it to different screens? Well, with Auto Layout, we can do all of that. First, we'll create an avatar image. Then, we'll add our data in an action icon on the right. Then, put it all together in a row and create a list. But how is it going to be responsive? Don't worry, we're going to solve this without the layout. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. We have a list of cells, a list of rows, and each one of them has two lines of text, an icon on the right, and an avatar on the left. So all of this is one single auto layout, but inside of it has another auto layout for these two lines. And then to make the list, we have to make another auto layout of the whole thing. All these cells are filled in the container. So if you stretch it, you see how they turn into one line or they turn into two lines if you shrink it down. So, okay, let's get to do it. So I have some elements here that I'm going to be using for this practice. I have a title, a subtitle, and an icon. The first thing that I'm going to do is create an auto layout of these two lines. So just select them and then press Shift A for auto layout. And then here I'm going to see the different settings that I have. I want to change the spacing between them, the padding between them to be eight pixels, maybe four pixels. That's a little bit tighter, a little bit better. And I'm going to leave the padding around it at zero. Now I'm going to put the icon over here, I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to create another auto layout. So press Shift A, and now I create a new auto layout. I can change the spacing between these two. Let's change it to eight pixels. It's a little bit too tight, but we're going to fix this later. Another thing is that I want this icon to be centered. So I'm going to select this frame, and I'm going to say that it's a line in the center. I have my elements here. Now I want to add an avatar on the left. So for that, I'm going to open the blush plugin. I'm going to open this, and then I'm going to go to the Dayflow collection. The Dayflow collection has this little avatar uh, illustration that I can use. So I'm going to actually, it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to turn it a little bit smaller. Maybe 40 pixels would be good. 40 by 40. 40 by 40, that looks a little bit better. Now, if I want to, I can just randomize the style of it, or I can just change it to whatever. This one with sunglasses looks pretty cool. I'm going to close the plugin, and I'm going to start playing around with this. So now I have this, and I can put this element. I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to select this frame, and I'm going to paste it inside. Right now, it put it all the way to the left, so I can just rearrange this. Here, you can see that it's arranged all the way to the top, and I'm just going to move it over here, and now it's moved to the left. Okay, so all the elements on my cell are ready. Now, I want this avatar to be inside a circle, so I'm going to turn it into an auto layout too. I'm going to press Shift A, and then to this one, I'm going to apply a fill. I'm just going to apply a white fill, and I'm going to change the corner radius. There you go. I can also apply a stroke. I'm going to apply a gray stroke, maybe two pixels. And here you're going to see that the image is here in the center, but there's also some padding around it. Right now it's eight pixels, so it's making the whole circle a little bit too big. So I'm going to make the avatar a little bit smaller. I'm going to go to 32 pixels. That's looking a little bit better. The cool thing is that this one is also an auto layout. Since it's an auto layout, I can adjust this, this padding around it. I can make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I think eight pixels is good, but it's good to know that you can apply auto layout to these kinds of things too, and then create layouts like this that are pretty cool. So I'm going to change the name here, just really quickly, avatar, it's really important to always name your layers correctly. So metadata, and then this one is already called right action. That's actually pretty good. Now that everything is together, I want to turn it into a component since I'm going to be reusing it multiple times. So I'm going to just Go over here, create component. I'm going to change it to cell or whatever you want to call it, row, something, line. And I'm going to just put it over here. This one is going to be my original. If I need to make changes, which I'm going to totally do, I can just do them here and see them replicate over here. For example, if I want to 
change the direction of these two, I could just do it really easily because it's an auto layout and it's also a component and I can see it replicated in other parts. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to start duplicating this little guy. I'm going to be Command D, Command D, Command D. I just duplicated it multiple times and now to this whole thing, I'm going to apply another auto layout. So press Shift A and it, for me, it just like I made it for five pixels. Just go ahead and change it. I'm going to put eight pixels between them. That looks pretty good. And now to some of them, I'm going to change the background to be like a light gray. So I'm going to just change the fill to be a light gray, just to make it a little bit different one line from the other. And now since all of this is an auto layout, I can also apply a background to the whole thing. So I'm going to apply another white background and I'm going to add some padding around it over here. Just a little bit of padding, maybe some corner radius. And look at that. Our list is starting to look really good. Now I'm starting to see that the spacing here is not the best. So I want to add to all of these, I want to add a little bit of corner radius and maybe I want to go over here to my original cell, to my component, and I want to add some padding on the sides. I'm going to add eight pixels on the left and eight pixels on the right. And also just the icon, now it looks a little bit better. It doesn't look as tight. So that's actually pretty good. I'm also, also going to add four pixels on the top, four pixels on the bottom. Now it, it looks like the spacing is a little bit too much, too much white space between them. So maybe I can remove this spacing between the lines. Let's go to zero, eh, maybe four pixels. Four pixels, that looks pretty good. Now, let's see what happens when I stretch it. Not the best results. So I want this, the contents inside, to stretch when I stretch the whole outer layout. So to do that, I need to change all of these to say that they are not hugging the content, but they are filling the container. So now when I stretch this, they're starting to stretch, right? And that's because the outer layout is stretching, but the contents, not really. So now I'm going to go to my component and I'm going to say that the elements inside should be a space between, not packed, but space between. Now I'm going to go over here, test it. It's starting to look good, but the element, the text, in the middle, it's not really stretching, it's just adjusting, it's just like centering itself. So I'm going to go and select these two, and I'm going to say that instead of hugging the contents, I want to fill the container. Okay, they're starting to fill the container. Now I can see it. They're starting to fill the container, but what happens if I add too much text? Eh, not the best results. I want it that if I add a lot of text, it breaks into two lines. So I'm going to go and select these two and I'm going to say that they don't hug the content but they fill the container. Look at that. Now they're filling the container. So whenever the container ends, it breaks into two lines. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. So again, you had to select, it's not just the parent but also the children have to be filling the container. Then this one is its own auto layout. It's also having to fill the container of the rest. And now why is the icon all the way to the right? Well, since this one is filling the container, it's pushing everything inside to the sides. It's just trying to fill the container. So that's why this one is remaining on the right because this one is pushing the content to the right. If this one wasn't fill the container and it was just like a fixed width, it would, this one would just be all the way to the left. But Let's just say that it's filling the container. Since it's filling the container, it's just pushing the contents to the right. Now, let's use another plugin. I like using this plugin, Content Real. And with this one, it creates random content like lorem ipsum that you can use on these kinds of things, just so it looks not as repetitive. It looks a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to select all the titles and I'm going to select this one that is full name. And then I'm going to select all these subtitles. And I'm going to say, I don't know, let's add a US full address. There you go. Look at that. Since some of these addresses are a little bit longer, it broke them into two lines, 
but that doesn't matter because we have auto layout and it works just perfectly. Now I'm going to do the same with these avatars. I'm going to open the blush plugin and all these doodles. I'm just going to change them to something else. I'm just going to select all of these. I'm going to press randomize and it just randomize them into these really cool doodles. This one is a little bit, uh, it's actually pretty cool, but uh, I want it to look similar to the other ones. The long hair is pushing it away. So there you go. Look at that, it looks pretty dope, right? Now, if I want to, I can also add a title to this list. So let's say that it's called directory. Now I can just drag it inside here and it's just going to be on the top. I'm going to change, to make it a little bit bigger. I have a heading style here. That looks pretty good. Now, something else that you can do, if you are like me, you will want this title to be aligned to the circles. Maybe it's not the best, but I don't know. I want it to be aligned to the circles. Since these circles have some padding, then this directory is a little bit too aligned to the left. So you can just press Shift A and add an auto layout to it too. And now since this one is its own thing, you can add some spacing and padding around it. So like you, you can say, Hey, you know what? I actually, what if you want it to be aligned to this? That would be a little bit weird, but if you want it, you could do that with the spacing, with the padding that this auto layout allows you to have. But I actually want it to be eight pixels, eight pixels. And also I want it to have its own padding just so it's a little bit separated from this. And just, I don't know, it looks a little bit nicer with that white padding around it. And also if I wanted to, I can say that it fills the container. Now it's filling the container. And if I had, I don't know, like another one with two lines, a really long, really long line. Okay. That's not really doing it. And that's because this element is also not fill in the container. I have to change it also to fill the container. And now it breaks into two lines, but I only wanted to say directory. So that's okay. But it's good to know this because you want to prepare this for any use case. So you prepare it and now you'll be ready. This, you can use it for a really long text or a short text and it will not break. Well, actually it will break but into two lines. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this lesson. There are more lessons about auto layout, so just keep watching all those videos. Thank you so much.